Blue Horizon is the best place in the world to watch a fight. The Mecca of Philly. The Blue Horizon was a, was a home run. The ring was the smallest ring I ever boxed in. Like anybody that was anybody fought there. A little bit more than a minute left in round two of a ten-rounder at the Blue Horizon Club, Philadelphia, on the fight of the week. Hayward, as you can see, likes to get in and trade. Folks is content to box. How many years did you promote at the Blue? Uh, 1969 to 2001. Then I came back for sporadic shows. Not that many. I don't think we ever had a really bad show there at the end. In the early years, it was different when I was learning how to make matches. As long as the fights were good, it didn't matter who was fighting. I didn't have to worry about records. I didn't have to worry about ticket sellers because we were selling out no matter who was fighting. So it was a matchmaker's dream. Sometimes they'd sell out before they announced the main event, which is very weird because it become like a cult classic. You go to the Blue Horizon, you're going to know that you're in a fight. Russell Pelsing played that. He didn't have mismatches too much. To really prove yourself a fighter, you got to go down there and you got to fight against a Philly fighter. A Philly fighter was a whole nother type fighter. If you didn't pass through the blue, yeah, maybe you're a boxer, maybe, you know, you may not have quite been there. Yeah, I think Russell Pelts, the Blue Horizon, he just wanted to put on a good, it was good fights, you know, because these are hungry boxing fans and, and they're not going to pay and go and see, you know, one-sided fight. No, nobody likes that. Seeing a guy get beat up who shouldn't be in there with this guy. They were officially, I think, 1,400 seats, right? One time, Tim Witherspoon fought there. I think it was he was in between titles or just lost a title or anything. They got 2,000 people in there. It's the perfect boxing venue. I don't think there's ever been a better boxing venue than, than Blue Horizon. There was not a bad seat in the house. It was, it was a special place. It was a special place. But, but it made me feel the first time like I, I could be my best. Like, like this, is, this is where you go, you know? It was almost it was like, a, and like you said, up in the balcony, looking down on you, a small ring. The ring was the smallest ring I ever boxed in. You know, our ring, it was 15-9 inside the rope, so it made for even better fights than normal. And it was an intimidating place to be. You, you know, almost like, uh, like in Rome, with the glad hit the Coliseum. That's what it felt like. I mean, if you were a fight fan, you literally had to go there just to experience it. People came from all over the country. Some people scheduled their vacations around our fights. When they, Russell first started promoting there, there was just one ticket price. No seats, you just paid. And as you know, the best seats were in the balcony because you could have jumped out of the balcony into the ring if you were crazy enough to do it. It was, it was as intimate a venue as there ever was. When you were in the blue, you would want to be in the balcony as opposed to run to ringside. I mean, most people, don't even, I don't want the ringside ticket. I want to be up here. Doors would open. You could hear like, like a cattle train coming in. You could hear all these people, all these people running, stomping on the, on the ground to get to those seats right, right above the ring. When the doors opened, there was like Oklahoma ran, land rush going up those stairs, people fall, falling down to get those best seats in the front row. Literally, not only could you jump from the balcony into the ring, but you could do it without getting hurt. That's how close it was. The balcony from the ring, you, you could almost touch it. That's how close. So if you're sitting in the balcony, I mean, you're looking right at the fight. It's, you, you're almost in there with the fighters. Like in the old days, people wanted to fight at Madison Square Garden. By the time we got to the 90s and we were on USA and then ESPN, everybody wanted to fight at the Blue Horizon. I was happier to fight there than to fight like at the Felt Forum. You have to run the gauntlet. You have to go through the blue to really prove yourself. History. You've been there. I've been there. I had many fights at the Blue Horizon. But in the 36 years of boxing shows, the Blue Horizon has never played host to an actual world championship fight. There have been 27 world champs who have climbed through the ropes here, all future and former world champions, but never a world title fight in front of the most ardent fight enthusiasts. Until tonight, 
when one of Philadelphia's own, Charles Brewer, whose career through twists and turns played out in front of the Blue Horizon crowd. Brewer makes his first world title defense at the Blue tonight, bringing the first world title fight to the legendary boxing monument, epitomized by Brewer. The Blue Horizon, Philadelphia in general, is blood, sweat, and tears. And the Blue Horizon on fight night, that's exactly what they want to see. And that's what you are. That's what I have been. What we called it on, on Tuesday Night Fights is we called it the House of Rockies. Everybody in there is a Rocky. They're all, you know, they've all got the dream. They got the music playing. So for, for Tuesday Night Fights, the Blue Horizon was a, was a home run. The dressing rooms are another level up. So you got the arena level and then the dressing room level. And you go into the dressing room, there's literally holes punched through the walls where even though I'm in this dressing room, I could see you in that dressing room. <laughs> you could look at your opponent. Coming up as a youngster, you know, the Blue Horizon was the Mecca of Philly. When I got that call, you know, it was, it was, it, it was, it was a pleasure. If you're from Philadelphia, you have to go through the Blue Horizon and get your blessings. And then you go around the world in different cities and all that. It actually was like fighting in the backyard. You know what I'm saying? All your friends around you, everybody screaming for you. They got you in a big circle, and you and, the, you and your opponent going at it. The Blue Horizon was such a neat place because it was like a, a family. Everybody knew each other. You know, when you come here, man, you got to show out. And that was my main thing. Once I fought in the Blue Horizon, it was the Mecca of Philly. You had to show off. You had to show out. And I knew I had, it. I had what it took to do that. You better know your stuff when you go to Philadelphia. You better know your stuff. You better know boxing, you better know history, because those fans are gonna ask you questions that they know the answers to. They live the answers to. So it was a, a tremendous experience for me to go to Philadelphia. Philly fans are tough, you know, and um, I don't wanna make it seem like that I was a, a crowd pleaser or a hometown favorite, but I had people that was born me too at the Blue Horizon, but that's how I knew I was, I was at the Blue, and I knew that's where I needed to be. Why would that be? Why would, would you, why would, were you fighting another local guy? Like, why would they boo you? It's just the way the fans work? Just the way the fans... Shit, excuse my expression. They done blew the, uh, they done blew the, uh, the Philly fanatic. I just felt like it was a, like a real boxing crowd. You know, they, they respect the boxing. They didn't care where you came from or who you are. That's what I felt. They just felt like, uh, you know, you, you show who you are in the ring. And, uh... And that's how they were like true boxing fans. It was we just got 10 extra seconds. But when I went there, I really felt like, you know, everyone's look, I'm going to lose this dressing room. Like, I'm supposed to lose this fight. When they first called me for the fight, I didn't know the Blue Horizon from, uh, you know, from anything. I didn't know what the Blue Horizon was. I fought Joey Gianfrido, who was a Philly fighter. They brought me there to lose, of course. They weren't bringing me there to win. And I beat them. In the beginning, you know, well, you're the, you're the out of town guy, so they want their guy to win. But once you take over, it was like they didn't care who was winning. They just watch a good fight, and whoever was winning, that's who they were cheering for. You know, I heard plenty of, hey, gonna go, gonna, you know, I mean, that was, uh, they, they don't, they, that crowd isn't, they're a fight crowd. He was the hometown guy, but I, I, I won, uh, I won a lot of the crowd. In the 11th hour, what a shot. The whole crowd was on their feet, the horizon. Kylie, Kylie. <laughs> Will we ever see another Blue Horizon? I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't think so. You hate to use the word, the word iconic too loosely, but the Blue was iconic. I ride past the Blue Horizon because I take Broad Street. It's like the major, one of the major arteries, right, in Philly. Um, and it's right there. It's still there. Everything is being built around it. Temple is built a nice... Uh, Dormitory there for kids, right? And I'm assuming that one of the developers is going to do something with it. And it's not going to be boxes, it's probably going to be condos. Now it's just a shell, and I mourn its passing. It, it, was, a, it was a special place. 